one quick merch plug before I completely forget. My amazing wife made these for me. That is a surprise. So they're made it so that she does resin art. This thing is sick. It actually in the when it gets UV like from the sun or from lights, it actually glows red, which is really sick. So she made this for me. It's neochrome like the wagon stuff I always do because you know I've got kind of a neochrome. I don't know. I don't know if you call it a sickness or disease, but I love neochrome. So she did that kind of that, that kind of pattern you can see in the in the light. The thing is, if you guys want some of these. She has made some for some of my other friends on Instagram and a couple on Facebook. So if you guys are interested in these, let me know. I'll put her link to her store on Etsy. And uh, you can ask her or send her a message if you want one in any kind of color. There's this one and there's a smaller one also that's a small, just rectangular one. So we're, what we're doing with these production runs is we're going to do dirt cheap. I want to do it with four bucks. And it's not because that's pretty much what these are going to end up costing to make. And uh, the shipping and handling, I'm covering. That's going to be on my dime. So it's kind of just a thank you to if you're watching my channels and if you like my stuff. And it helps her out because it gets traffic to her Etsy channel. And it's just, it's cool. I like it a lot. It's just neat to have. It's a little flashy in my, my keychain, but who cares? It's awesome. It's Neochrome and Dash and Cars. So hit her up if you want some. Hey, guys. So, yeah, I totally... I'm not shooting two videos right back to back and then releasing them on a schedule. Actually, that's exactly what I'm doing. So I will be gone to Texas for the uh, holidays. So kind of like I talked about in my last video, I want to shoot a couple videos to release throughout the week. That way I have content coming out without actually having to put out content. It's just a scheduling thing that I've been working on with the channel. I'll have a better schedule out for next year. We'll put it that way. So look for... So, but anyway. Today I want to talk about my Rallycross trailer. Now I've talked about this a little bit in the last video. Uh, I really didn't talk about it in the Rallycross video where I went to uh, Brian Corns for the uh, last Cone Killer Chronicles, but it was really cool and it was really at like the last minute kind of ditch effort to make sure I could get it and then get it ready for a long trip and make sure everything fit. And it was all kind of a real rush and I was still a little sick and it was pouring rain, so there was no video to be made about it, which I really wanted to make a video about it, but that's what we'll do now. So this is my Rallycross trailer. It's a Harbor Freight Special. If you've seen these trailers, they're I think $400, $500 or something like that on Harbor Freight, or from Harbor Freight. And it's, it's pretty basic. It's just a little lightweight trailer. It's not made for hauling a whole heck of a lot of stuff, but you can, it's pretty modular, so you can put a lot of crap on there, you can bolt it all however you want to, you can rearrange it all how you want to. This trailer I bought probably a year and a half ago, and it's actually, it was designed by my good friend Eric Davis for an S2000 autocross trailer. So he used to hook this up to his S2000, and he used to go to autocross. So, with that in mind, he built this in order to hold two 17 by 9 S2000 tires here and two 17 by 9 S2000s here. So what I've been doing is this. I've been stacking my Rallycross tires, my 15 by 6s. And then he has these pipes that are to length for the 17 by 9s. But the good thing is, is with this little bit of wood in here, you can kind of see it there. It actually sits on the wheel, so it actually gives it just enough space to be able to line it all up. And then you just thread this in there like so, twist it down, and it actually sits on the hub of the second wheel when you put it here. Like I said, I've got, I can stack both wheels there. And then when you do that, you just thread it down into the, uh, the pipe fitting. And when you do that, you've got both your wheels here secured. You get a couple of cranks, and then, of course, you got the tie downs where you can just wrap it through here and down to here to uh, make sure the wheels don't go anywhere just in case they do come loose. It's such a really cool design. It's uh, very, very handy. So it actually has this storage box in the back as well. And he actually said that it came off at one point. That's why it's all scraped up on this side. You can't really see it in the dark, but this side's been filed down by the road, you can see. And this whole lid's kind of broken off on one side. But it works great. Uh, he also said, I think in that same instance, the uh, the entire trailer 
rotated and landed on, I think on its side or maybe all the way over, but it twisted the tongue and you can kind of see, and it's kind of hard to pick it up on video, but it's actually tweaked a little bit. It's kind of hard to see on video. So what I'm going to plan on doing is redoing the tongue. Uh, I got to get a new hitch because this one's a conglomerate of what I had laying around to make it work. And I just ended up making it so I just unhooked the uh, hitch from the actual car and just slid that out and said I have to take the ball out because the ball had a torque. It, it's, don't worry about it. It's a pain in the butt, but it works. It got from Austin and back just fine. I had to replace one of the lights. It was broken on the side, so I just put this LED here. Uh, it's got cool turn signals on the side. And uh, my future plans are to uh, rewire this and put a new plug on here because the old plug is just, you know, it's kind of old and dry rotted and it's... It works, but I want to put in, you know, an upgraded wiring kit on here and get all that sorted out. That way it's one less thing to worry about. Uh, I want to replace this too. I may just go ahead and put a two inch receiver on here. I've got the one inch and seven eighths ball in there right now, but actually I have a two inch that I can use for the Fiesta. And uh, I probably will eventually change this out for a newer one. It worked really well. Uh, the entire way down to Austin, it was pouring rain. And the way this is thing's designed, it kept the rain out. It had one little seepage, and I think that's just because where that hinge is broke. But it was, it was fantastic the entire way down. And of course, you got a, a ratchet strap that goes over the top and ratchets down from, to that point. You can tie it down. That, of course, I ran a bungee from here to here, just for insurance purposes for me. There was gonna be a few upgrades. I may end up going to a little better tire. These are you know, fine tires for a trailer stuff, but I want to make sure that they're good for the long haul, like I said, because I want to go to the West Coast this year, and I want to make sure that I have a good set of tires uh, for such a long trip. But honestly, these probably will be fine. Uh, the hubs and all that stuff are great for the trip. They're, uh, I checked the temperature the whole way down. They never got hot once. The tires were seeing a little bit of heat in there, but I ran them up in pressure. You can see this line here. We're actually contacting the middle, so that means they're a little over pressurized, but that's okay. I can go back down on that. Uh, besides that, I may change out some of the wood planks. They're still in good condition, but we'll see. I don't know if I'll end up doing like aluminum grating or whatnot with all that. But yeah, I'll redo that, make sure the lights are all good to go. They're, so far, they all work just fine, but I want to do an LED conversion for the tail, tails and brake lights, turn signals, all that stuff. But besides that, it's been a killer trailer. It was really a clutch thing because if I didn't have this, we wouldn't have been able to take the whole family down to Austin because I couldn't take Ace and Brooke and all their stuff plus all my rallycross gear. And this thing saved us completely. It was easy to haul around. It's super lightweight. I mean, tongue weight. There's literally nothing to it. Uh, you could, I don't know how much actually it weighs, but it's not much at all even completely loaded down with all my gear and the tote and tires, it's still, it's super light. The Fiesta had zero issue hauling it around at a highway and interstate speeds, just fine. So yeah, that's the uh, Rallycross trailer. It'll be kind of a channel project here and there. We'll uh, pick up some upgrades along the way. If you guys have anything cool that you think that I should add to it, let me know. I thought about doing like a, maybe a receiver mount here on the back and actually putting just, like a tailgate, like sitting area or something. I don't know, something for Brooke while they're at the rally so they can hang out. But then you can see there's all kinds of mount points back here. We can do something, do a whole LED bar or I don't know, something. Maybe a barbecue attachment, I don't know. I also want to be able to pull it behind the wagon eventually. I've got a hitch for the wagon that also Justin donated. It's kind of a common theme. Justin donates a lot of cool stuff because he's an awesome guy. I've got the hitch here for the wagon, which is a pretty piss poor mount design, but We'll tackle that another day. That's the Rallycross trailer build, and I'm super excited about it because it's so handy. It's such a great thing to have. And uh, if you have a schedule like me, if you're traveling like me, it's a lifesaver. I picked that up for really cheap because it was, uh, it's been wrecked, sorta, of. it's been flipped, but I never had an issue out of it. I've pulled it from Austin here and back all across the state a couple times with the element. Phenomenal and I, I can't complain. And I really pushed it hard when I brought it home in the element. Uh, there's a twisty road on the way here and I took it in the element, like it's called Highway 9. And I was flying with that thing and I was not being easy. I was driving it like I was trying to get there in a hurry. Never had an issue, never skipped, never jumped, never was fishy or froggy. It's kind of my shakedown run for it to see what it really could do. 
and uh, the previous owner uh, verified that it could do 150 miles per hour. Uh, he was allegedly in Mexico. So yeah, the Mexico, it's been Mexico tested as well. So that's it. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything else. Uh, I would like to do some cool stuff with it. So if you guys have any cool ideas what I should do with it, let me know. Anyway, guys, I'm out. See ya. Oh, and this video will probably come out a little bit before Christmas, so Merry Christmas, you filthy animals.